G'day everyone. Finding Avalon is crossing the Atlantic Ocean next week. Time to reveal the crew. Our captain is Jackson, hailing from Sydney. Now, he first fell in love with sailing more than 20 years ago through his granddad, who actually had a boat named Avalon. Jackson's been racing skiffs, yachts, and dinghies his whole life. Our first mate is Xanthi from Southwest England. Our first mate had never sailed before meeting Jackson, but he made a sailor out of her. Jackson has been teaching her the ropes since they set sail from Croatia six months ago, and she's found her sea legs remarkably well. Our number two, old Lukey boy from Long Island. A sailor by vocation, Luke spends summers in Long Island as a sailing instructor and escapes to the Sandblast Islands for winter to crew a backpacker yacht. Luke and Jackson used to sail together in the Miami University sailing team and he's crewed on Finding Avalon before through Sardinia and Ibiza. Every good boat has an astral navigator on board, and Avalon has Xanthi's dad, Neil. Neil had never experienced sailing before until he joined Finding Avalon for a few days in Malta. He was hooked instantly and signed up to crew for the Atlantic Crossing. Neil is big into astronomy and can tell you a thing or two about the night sky. Jackson, I forgot to turn the anchor on. Can you turn it on, please? It's 12 a.m. and we are we are on our way to the Canary Islands. Sorry, <laughs> we're in the Canary Islands. We're on our way from Puerto Ventura to Gran Canaria. Reason being is because we're meant to have really good wind, so we will be going fast. And the trip should only take us about 15, 16 hours. So that means if we want to arrive in the middle of the day, we need to leave in the middle of the night. So that's what we're doing. I'm just upping the anchor. I can still taste the toothpaste on my lips, it's so early.
Lukey boy arrived early the next morning and was keen to get stuck into Atlantic Crossing preparations. First day at school, we've got, we got all our seminars, we're going to that many. This one's for Xanthi. <laughs> What's a boat? Shut up. What's a steering wheel? What is wind? All right, so we had uh, about eight hours of seminars today. A whole school day. How do you guys feel about them? I feel like I've been hit by a bus. How do these kids do it at school? <laughs> <laughs> Which one was your favorite, Xanthi? Let's pick the last one we had, downwind sailing. Downwind sailing. Probably the most appropriate. Are you going to tell me if I'm going to walk into something? Uh, yeah, you just <laughs> I liked the weather one. That was probably the one I knew the least on in terms of trying to decipher the route and decide on what route you want to take yeah. for the crossing. Because you know how to stay but it's probably... <laughs> you reckon? I mean, I've watched you out there. You're pretty good. Double-handed sailing was alright. Yeah. But I guess mostly stuff that's worked out. I, I do feel worried about the people who simply go to bed for eight hours a night relying on their electronics. And one guy put his hand up and said, oh, by the way, just so everyone knows, electronics are actually more reliable than people on watches, so just go to bed. That's what we're <laughs> I hope we know when they're here. So there was one couple with that. Look, whatever you choose to do, you can do. I, I'm not here to judge, but <laughs> I personally would not just be like going to bed for eight hours a night and relying on my radar alarm to go off when something's there. The final piece in the puzzle was for Dad to arrive and then our crew was complete. You've got plenty. The size Dad. of his? Got... Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah. All right, that's what I eat out of. So when it's rough, do you want to practice? Dad, no. That's a wrench. <laughs> yeah, Jackson <laughs> eats with that. It's the nuts. <laughs> now that the crew is all together, the captain gave us a rundown of all the equipment on the boat. We had a safety briefing and we also tested out the newly fitted third reef in the main. We had spent weeks preparing for the Ark's extremely rigorous safety protocol. A man called Stefan came round to check whether we were up to scratch and the only thing he wasn't happy with was our emergency tiller system, so Dad got to work on making a new one. Very smart. Fantastic, thanks Dad. You're proving quite useful already. Let's hope we never actually have to use it though. <laughs> so gone through the safety briefing, we've looked at how to put the storm jib up and played around with whistle poles. So now we're going to go out and have a little sail and have a go at putting all the roots in, a few tacks and jives and some kind of board drills. Strangled in my sleep. You want me to shape up, but in my dreams I found relief. Jackson, you got this thing you have for a 
To the race and every second every day was spent planning, plotting and preparing for the arc. So Luke was saying, oh sorry, Neil was uh, Neil. Chris. Chris was saying that we want to head to about here. 25 west, 20 north. That was where he was suggesting that we wanted to come out of Gran Canaria, make our way south, basically almost to Cape Verde's, taking those northerly winds before we get here. And then that's when we turn the corner and head over. I don't think the first 12 hours is gonna be particularly exhilarating. We're starting. We want to avoid like this big patch, so we don't want to like skirt the coast. We, we have, have, have to go to the south. Okay, we're now approximately here. So one thing that the Ark warned us about was filling up to uh, filling up our diesel beforehand. We're pretty happy that we did that because, as you can see, oh, there are my friends. Pure elegance from Hamble. Maybe they just got their diesel. And then we see one, two, three, four, five. That guy over there is over at the diesel pump. We're quite happy that we aren't in the queue for diesel right now because it takes about an hour for one of these guys to fill up. So, uh, yeah, go have one. It's D-Day, we're leaving today, and that's the start line. People have already accumulated there. I'm supposed to be there right now, so I just needed to paint our little sign because we didn't get around to it. And it was quite nice and relaxing after all the hubbub of this week. So I'm glad I got that done. Doesn't it look pretty? And yeah, just gonna go and hop on Avalon now and we're gonna go to the start line.
tossing a few coins into the ocean to throw off treasure hunters in a couple hundred years. <laughs> uh, and, and for some good luck, the start of a long voyage. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we have a good trip. Woo! Now, is this something you do often? Yeah, Is this a ritual that you do all the time? Just at the, just at the start of a long passage. Oh, a long crossing. Yeah. Every time you do an Atlantic crossing, you do this. <laughs> oh, it doesn't have to be. Next up on Finding Avalon, 18 days and three quarters at sea crossing the Atlantic. sounds oh. I don't like fart noises in my rich sounds <laughs> he does it all the time really really annoying oh. thank you 